inshallah, we will be celebrating uh, life and work of Raza Abdul Jabbar. Um, the event will be hybrid. We have colleagues here in person. Many colleagues will be joining us <coughs> remotely and attending remotely. Uh, event will be recorded and pictures will be taken. If you don't want your picture to be there, either let us know or we will put smiley face on your uh, picture. Post First taking your picture. First time I saw it at my kids' in class Ahmed. where they put Ahmed. the smiley faces on the kids' faces and I saw they are under witness protection program or something. <laughs> Did not understand why they have it. So, if there's a fire Ahmed. alarm, just cross your Ahmed. fingers and hope it's a test. Uh, but if it's a real one, don't worry, we have exits on both sides of the car park. Before proceeding any further, we will have a dissertation from Holy Quran from Brother Amar. Brother Amar, please come forward. And, uh, and this one? Is using this one? Is using the microphone? I think it, it covers everyone. I see, okay. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Qala hadha rahmatun min rabbi Fa'idha jaa wa'adu rabbi ja'alahu dakkaa Wa kana wa'adu rabbi haqqa وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفخ في الصور فجمعناهم جمعا وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إنا أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا ذلك جزاؤهم جهنم بما كفروا واتخذوا آياتي ورسلي هزوا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا صدق الله العظيم جزاكم الله خير Thank you very much, Bazaar. Thanks a lot.
Uh, because of the school holiday week, I think most of the presentable speakers were not available, so the organizers got me at half price from Lidl. <laughs> so you are stuck with me for the next few hours. Uh, before joining Islamic Relief, my, I was working for International Rescue Committee, and my boss was a county director, a Bosnian guy, very nice. He told me asking for your opinion and asking you to speak is like a, a medical procedure. I can't mention which one. It's a medical procedure for men. He said it can be uncomfortable, embarrassing, and painful, but can potentially save your life and a career. So I hope organizers will not regret for having me here, uh, inshallah. But uh, if I do traumatize you, don't worry. At IRW, we have three layers of social psychological counseling. We have our mental first aiders. We have a BHSF. And we have recently contracted another party, and I hope we don't put that fact on our website, in the recruitment section. People may think we are a sadistic organization that likes to traumatize people and then treat them. Uh, okay, on that note, and on the more serious note, mental health is very serious, and we should all try to break the stigma around it and make this provision available to our teams on the ground, as we did make incremental clearize for our country programs as well. And I would like to thank Professor Wasim and the trustees for making that a consistent approach, inshallah. Uh, okay. Since I'm the host, I'll start off first. Uh, when I first met with Brother Abdul Jabbar, it was year 2005, uh, August 22nd, 2005. I arrived to Birmingham for the first time to start my job. I arrived to the Digby Scotch Station, and if you think it looks depressing now, you should have seen it in 2005. I arrived at the dusk, went out, it looked like a, I don't know, movie scene of a post-apocalyptic movie. <laughs> Everything falling apart, and uh, there were a lot of people suffering from drug abuse, walking dazed and disoriented. And then around that backdrop, I saw Islamic Relief's building. I said, okay, not the best of the introductions, but anyways, I went in the morning, 9 a.m., I came in. And here he was, Brother Abu Jabbar. I stood in front of him at the reception. He was on a phone. And just to put into the context, at that time, Islamic Relief was a little bit, what's the right word, maybe original. Like there were no <laughs> fake niceties, no fake smiles, and uh, everybody was, what you see is what you get. <laughs> so Brother Abu Jabbar was on the phone. I stood in front of him. He put the phone down and looked at me and said, ah. <laughs> and I said, good morning, I'm starting my work here at the president's office as advocacy projects coordinator. Then he looked at me and said, about me, huh? it's coming, Dr. Hanyan. It's impossible Wait, to speak Dr. about our history without bumping into Dr. Hanyan. <laughs> he told me, sit, which I went and sat 20 minutes just sitting there. And I saw a very sweet-looking man enter, Dr. Hani. What? I say sweet because even at that time, Dr. Hani had this benevolent look. Even though he tried to look, he tried to look tough, like because you know he was the boss. So he came in, and then he started talking to Brother Abdul Jabbar. And it was the first time I was hearing two old-fashioned Arab men talk to each other. <laughs> At some point, I thought maybe they would start stabbing each other. <laughs> but apparently, they were just saying, "How are you? How is your family? Is you know, any post for me?" Then Brother Abdul Jabbar started pointing at me, and Dr. Hani came slowly and said, Who are you? I, I said, I am starting work at President's Office, Advocacy Projects Coordinator, arrived yesterday. Uh, I'm happy to be here, did this work. And Dr. Hani said, Very good, very good. Later on, I realized when Dr. Hani says, Very good, very good, it means I'm bored, don't tell me more. <laughs> so I just did like this. I assume it meant come with me. We went to his office, he sat in front of like, I sat in front of him, he took out his shoe, smelled it, <laughs> then offered me to smell, I said, not my thing. He said, no, 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 this is the first time I'm wearing it, for the first time, and it's not comfortable and smells really terrible, I don't know what it is. So he puts it on the table, he said, yes, Samira. <laughs> what is Sister Samira? First time I met Sister Samira, she hasn't changed at all since 2005. So she came in, and Dr. Hani said, Tell him how terrible it is to work for me. <laughs> and Samira said, no, you will enjoy it. It was it will be great. And anyways, then he called Brother Ayaz Ali to come and take me to the Samson house, where I stayed for four years working there. And each time I used to come to the building, Brother Abdul Jabbar used to look at me suspiciously like, <laughs> something doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> so I used to sign in two years. At the end of the two years, Brother Abdul Jabbar told me, do you work for us? <laughs> I said, yes. 
And he said, why are you signing in? I said, I'm scared of you and you don't tell me anything, so I just sign in, I'm passing. He started uh, laughing and since then, mashallah, whenever I used to see him, he used to give me this, uh, you know, very, very friendly smile. And uh, what can I say about Baz Jabbar? I think he symbolizes everything what Islamic belief used to be and inshallah will continue to be. Raw like a diamond, you know, may not be a smooth talker, may not be good at waffling and, you know, producing hot air, but tough, uh, sturdy, full of values, modest and humble, as Islamic relief used to be and will be and is, inshallah. And uh, very simple in the sense of getting his work done. And most importantly, very dignified. You know, in this life, you cannot choose what you do, but you can always choose who you are, as the saying goes. And Brother Abdul Jabbar, mashallah, in all these years, always chose, made the right choice. And I wish all of us could be more like him. Thank you very much, Brother Abdul Jabbar, everything you did. It's all about intention. Uh, most of our colleagues who started this organization started it with the intention. They didn't start it to build careers or self-promote or whatever. And they started and gave up their careers in more traditional sectors to, be, to, to make this organization what it is. On this note, I'll just pass on my thanks. It's a, honestly a great honor and I'm very privileged to host this event in your honor. And I will stop and pass the microphone to the next speaker. But before doing that, inshallah, we aim to finish the meeting at 1. There is a prayer at 1.15 to be led by Brother Abdul Jabbar. And then there will be a lunch served. On this note, uh, I'll pass on to Brother Ibrahim to play the video recording from our Chair of Trustees, Dr. Ihab. Thank you, Sister Shaila. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, my dear sisters and brothers. We are gathered here today to uh, celebrate and say thank you and say goodbye to a dear brother who has been a uh, pillar of Islamic relief since its inception. And I think for those who are used to coming to the office on a regular basis, it's going to be very hard to come and not to see the beautiful face and the beautiful smile of our dear brother Abdul Jabbar. Brother Abdul Jabbar has been with Islamic Relief since its inception, and since we are almost celebrating 40 years next year, inshallah, uh, that shows, mashallah, the longevity and the sacrifice uh, and the steady hand that our dear brother Abdul Jabbar has lent to Islamic Relief. Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our dear beloved, beloved Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, teaches us the best way to thank someone for a valuable service that they have given uh, to us as his uh, sisters and his brothers. And he وسلم, said in the meaning of the hadith that whoever tells his brother or his sister, Jazakallah khayran, may Allah the Almighty reward you, they have paid them back for all the good things that they have done. Words, except for these words, Jazakallah khayran, are not enough to reflect our appreciation and gratitude for our dear brother Abdul Jabbar and similar sisters and brothers who have been with the organization for so long and have been working behind the curtains, not seeking the limelight, not seeking recognition on a daily basis. But mashallah, these are the veins and the blood in these veins of Islamic relief. This is what allowed this organization to become what it is today. So uh, I know that Brother Abdul Jabbar is not going to leave Islamic Relief. He has left uh, a trace behind him. I know his daughter, mashallah, is working with uh, Islamic Relief to continue the mission of her father and to be proud of the accomplishments Ismail. and the mission of her father. Ismail. And I know that Brother Abdul Jabbar is not going to be away from Islamic Relief again whenever we call upon him whenever we ask him for any support or any service, I know that for sure he's not going to think twice about it. So in conclusion, my dear brother Abdul Jabbar, inshallah, until I see you uh, from myself and all my, uh, on behalf of my sisters and brothers of the world, and actually on behalf of all the millions 
that Islamic relief has touched uh, over the years worldwide, we unanimously tell you, Jazakallahu khayyad, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, and may you find the true reward for everything that you have done for Islamic relief, not only in this life, but most importantly on the Day of Judgment, when you see all the smiles on the faces of people you have touched over the years, and you hear their dua for you, and you drink from the hands of our beloved Ameen. messengers of Allah. Ameen. 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 To accept from you all of your great deeds for Islamic relief, and to make you a shining example Ameen. for all of our sisters and brothers who are working for this organization, <coughs> to be a role model for them, and definitely for me individually, um, and um, inshallah you are going to start another chapter of your bi'idnillah long and long um, life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you and grant you success in everything that you touch and everything that you do. And again, until we meet inshallah sometime soon, jazakallah khayran and make dua for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts from all of us. Jazakallah khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <coughs> Mashallah. <clears throat> Very beautiful prayers from Dr. Ihab. I'd like to echo them as well. Yeah. Uh, next, we have online with us uh, Brother Harun Atalla, who used to be our former CEO and currently our trustee. Um, I'll hand over the microphone to him, inshallah. Yeah. Abdul I saw him earlier. I asked him to come sit down here. Sit here. He's not there. No, I saw him earlier. If he's not there, maybe we can come back. Yes, that's the request to join, maybe. Yeah, okay. Uh, seems like Brother Harun is not online. He will join later. I saw him earlier, but anyways, uh, we'll come back to Brother Harun. Uh, next is Brother Adnan Saif online as well, joining us. I'm not sure if he's with us. He will come back to him, so that's fine. Then we'll go to the video recording of Brother Saleh Saeed. Uh, he used to be our former CEO. He's online now. Okay. Brother Adnan is online, yeah? Brother Adnan, please go ahead. Alaikum salam. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Have I got half an hour or an hour? It's a good, a good question. I should have mentioned it earlier. We want everyone to do maximum three to five minutes, please. I spoke longer because I'm the host. First of all, my apologies that I could not be with you because um, um, COVID-19 uh, decided to visit me yesterday. So I do not want to... Um, to share this, uh, this uh, what shall I say, blessing with you all. But um, anyway, um, in, 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 when, we, um, when we come to moments like this, where we want to say something to a, a, a brother, um, words fail to, to really uh, measure up to the, to the, um, to the occasion. Um, I have known Brother Abdul Jabbar as, um, as, as a dear brother and, uh, and his family, close family uh, uh, relation and friendship with, with my family. And so um, for, for, for 40 years almost, um, whenever, I, whenever I hear the term founding of Islamic Relief, uh, two people come to mind more than anyone else. Um, uh, Dr. Hani and Brother Abdul Jabbar, um, and I'll tell you why. Back in the day, in Mosley Road, when the um, 
when we used to uh, to compete for the office space with Dr. Hani Anwar Abdul Jabbar, with with the uh, with the with the cans in which they used to collect the uh, the coins. That's the memory that's embedded in my head. Back in I don't know when it was 82, 80, 84, 83, something like that. So Rod Abdul Jabbar's um, relationship with 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 the with the charity, with the Islamic relief, with uh, with the community is 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 is, is something that cannot be uh, uh, easily described. Um, one of the one of one of one of the one of, one of the one of the uh, it, it's, as I said, it's difficult to to bring somebody in his presence because um, I think what we need to do in a moment like this is to draw really inspiration and lessons. And 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 one of the ways that I um, um, that I one one of the qualities that I recognize in Brother Abdul Jabbar may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless him, give him long life and. Uh, more time to give is uh, his, um, his 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 steadfastness in 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 in, in staying with Islamic relief, um, becoming a face of Islamic relief. Because I, for me, when I walk into Islamic relief and I see him there at the desk, it, it when I was a trustee, it used to always give me an assurance um, of the constancy of the message of Islamic relief. And uh, while the organization has grown from the pennies and pounds that it used to uh, collect to the millions that it is now uh, entrusted with, the presence of uh, brothers like Abdul Jabbar throughout the life of Islamic Relief so far um, always instills in us um, that the message remains the same, which is serving humanity. And, and, and sometimes, uh, we come across a hadith, and I got to know this hadith actually through one publication of Islamic Relief. Um, I think it was Islamic Relief Austria. I was just flying, and I had uh, back from Austria, and I had this pamphlet from Islamic Relief, and it says it's such a powerful hadith. It says, "Inna lillahi ibad an ittasahum Allah wa qabai hawaij nas, habbahum ila al-khayr wa habbah al-khayr ilayhim." So, so it was the first that I came across this hadith on a publication of Islamic Relief, and what, what the hadith basically says for those brothers who might not understand Arabic is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala chooses, selects, in the and so this uh, selectivity. Uh, of people that Allah SWT made doing goodness beloved to them and they are given the reward of, sa of, 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 of being saved during the day of judgment. Um, sometimes you try to picture people and to say, right, who's in that category? Are we anywhere close to such people? And um, some of us come and go. You know, we, 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 we dabble in charity work and then we move on to do stuff and so on. But those brothers and sisters who have constantly remained with the cause, despite all the challenges, and you know what challenges Islamic Relief has faced, mashallah. But if it was not for the barakah, for the blessings, and for the sort of um, people that work in this cause, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to safeguard it. And I, 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 I you know, without wishing to uh, uh, presume, but. Um, for Allah knows best, I think Brother Abdul Jabbar and people like him are amongst those brothers and sisters who are who have who have uh, made Islamic relief what it is, and it is their dua, their patience, their sacrifice that has uh, enabled many other people to come, <coughs> join the ship, work, and then move on perhaps, and yet the ship remains steadfast and it's in its, its journey. I could say um, so many other things, but I, 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 will not, uh, I will not take over the time. But Brother Abdul Jabbar does not only contribute to Islamic Relief, because he, is, he has been a trustee of the Mu'ad Trust, and he has been one of the founders of, of, of the Mu'ad Trust. So whatever you see there, he has made a contribution to as well. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him the highest of rewards, to grant him the blessing of continuing uh, good health, 
and contribution to whatever cause he has uh, uh, given to. Wassalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Brother Adnan. Uh, thank you very much. The next, I think we have a video recording from Brother Saleh Saeed, who used to be our former CEO. Harun is back. This is a message to our dearest brother, Brother Saleh Saeed, who is back from Iran. Uh, yeah, let's proceed. We will go to Brother Harun. Everything that you've done for Islamic Belief. I remember serving my early days together with you, uh, working in Mosley Road, where, mashallah, you're so diligent around welcoming people to the Dar, introducing them to Islamic. What happened? Assalamu alaikum. This is a, a message to our dearest brother, Abdul Jabbar. Abdul Jabbar, a huge, huge thank you for everything that you've done for Islamic belief. I remember serving my early days together with you, uh, working in Mosley Road, where, mashallah, you're so diligent around welcoming people to the Dar, introducing them to Islamic belief, but also critically receiving those very early donations which the vast majority came through cash and checks in your wonderful big accountancy books that used to diligently record every single check and record it every single fund that the donors wanted to go to. That was the kind of service alhamdulillah that established Islamic belief as being not only a quality organisation but a humble organisation, a welcome organisation, an effective organisation. In those early days, mashallah, you helped establish the Islamic belief and the work that it does to this very day, mashallah. I also just wanted to thank you for your support to me and I'm sure to so many other people in the room today and outside the room. You always were there to, to put a, a hand, an arm around the shoulder to listen advice, warmth, and just to be able to uh, speak to people in a tone, mashallah, that makes everyone feel at ease. Mashallah, your, your service to Islamic Hadith is, is, is a record, I think, and no doubt that there isn't anybody in this room or beyond that doesn't recognize the great effort and the great work that you've done uh, for the organization. I'm really sorry we can't be in the room with you today. I'm really happy to dash out now to catch a train. As you know, we're uh, in the midst of the Turkey and Syria earthquake appeal, which Mashallah has been uh, very generously responded to by the public. And we know some of the staff on the ground are, are doing an, an excellent job, as always. So to you, Abdul Jabbar, and to all our friends and colleagues in the room and outside, thank you for all the support of Islamic Khalif. Bajibar, we're wishing you a very long, happy, and peaceful uh, retirement. And I'm sure you'll continue to support Islamic Belief through many, many ways, as you've always done throughout your time with Islamic Belief. That was Brother Saleh Said. He used to be our former CEO. Uh, now he's the CEO of PEC. Uh, now he's there. Um, is Brother Harun online? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, inshallah. Brother Harun, please. Alhamdulillah. Over to you, Brother Harun. Yeah. Yes, we can. Yes, yes. Okay, very good. Alhamdulillah, uh, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. I'm sorry I can't be there with you in person. I am in Rome next to the Vatican. So, uh, keep keep praying. One holy place to the other. <laughs> But uh, on this uh, tremendous occasion and achievement by my dear brother, Rashid Jokhar, 
when uh, I was informed that he is going to retire to Shahab to Jabari, and he has been my brother and support from the day I set foot in Birmingham in more ways than you probably realize. Uh, just uh, for all of us to realize, and I heard some of what Brother Adnan Sayyid said, it's a, it's a great honor to work in the service of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we all, our lives should be dedicated for Allah Azza wa Jal. But to be consistent in that and work in an Islamic organization uh, for this period of time is a tremendous action. And I think many of the people who have joined the discussion today have reflected that in the words they have said, and only but also by their presence. I see Dr. Nani is sitting there next to Brother Abdul Jabbar and Rasim. Generations that pass on the torch one to the other. The most difficult thing is to build an institution and to remain true to the values that this organization was set up for. And I think Abdul Jabbar is the embodiment of these values. All of us came into Islamic belief uh, expecting to do voluntary work, not expecting to be remunerated for it. But of course, with time, as the organization grew and we were dedicating more of our time, we started to shyly accept to take salaries. Of course, the organization has moved since these days, but I think many of the people sitting uh, now listening to this conversation will not realize that for many years the organization was run by people who did not receive any remuneration, including Brother Santi Jabbar and Dr. Hany, of course, and many others, of course, who have dedicated the life and work for this uh, holy mission. One thing that comes to my mind is that when I look back at my own life and the many things I have done, I only pray to Allah Azza wa in whatever capacity I'm serving Islamic relief at the moment is that this would be what uh, puts me in the day of judgment, gives my balance something that helps me pass the Sarat and pass the, the final and most important test, which is the one on the Day of Judgment. Our work that we do in Islamic Relief is first and foremost for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we serve Allah Azza wa Jal through serving His people, through serving the people whom Allah Azza wa Jal has obliged us to serve, not out of a sense of getting some reward from it, but out of sense of duty. And Abdul Jabbar has always been like that. And if I was to trust anybody in this world with any amount of money, I can't think of anyone more more trustworthy than Abdul Jabbar. May Allah bless you, Abdul Jabbar, you and your family. I mean, I mean, I mean. We continue to support the Islamic belief that we all do. As I have taken earlier time from Islamic belief, so that they will put me back in to help in other ways. And I'm sure you will do the same and we will continue to volunteer and help Islamic Relief in Shalom its mission. Barak Allah and Barak Allah everyone who is on this call. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Brother Harun. Uh, Brother Harun was our CEO before Brother Saleh Saeed. Uh, because of technical reasons, we were not able to get the sequence right. And in that respect, I think our next CEO in person with us, even we have already kind of destroyed the sequence, so let's carry on with that. Brother Nasr Haj Hamid, please. <coughs> he is destructive power. <laughs> <laughs> I was not born that way with uh, any federal speech. So this is a Bible. <laughs> and if you, Haron or Adnan or others, found it very emotional to give the speech, and I find it even more difficult. Uh, so I'm not. But uh, I will say what um, I would have said anyway, private to Prophet and the Baran Run. Uh, I've known him for a long time, like everybody else. I joined Islamic State back in October 1993, and I left January 2021. So 27 years, I worked closely with Abu Jabbar. Um, what really touched my heart about Al-Jabbar is his manners, okay, his akhlaq, and the way he did with people. And actually, unless you meet him, you don't know that he's there sometimes. He just yeah, gets he on his job, he does what he needs to do, he doesn't make any noise, he doesn't say I'll be working hard or long hours or short hours, he just takes his responsibility. 
and he will do whatever he needs. Uh, I'm just going to remind him as well because I saved his life one day. <laughs> the robber of the past. He was involved in the road. Probably 93, 94. He was on his own at the office on what they wrote when brother walked in with a big knife or the tiger they call it and demanded that he get some of the donations because he was entitled to it or he would kill it. So Abdul Bar called me and myself, Yusuf Hamid and Azhar, I think what is that? Siraj, Siraj, Siraj. Anidin. We jumped in the car and we went to Kabir and we tried to try to help him. Uh, the other brother who was, was trying to attack him, Japan, was uh, very clever. Once we tried to go into the room, the brother went out and he was by the door. Now we were stuck inside, all of us. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't know what to do, but Yusuf Hamra was very quick to act. Um, he found a big stick and he grabbed it. He said, now you attack us and we'll kill you. No, <laughs> the brother uh, got scared and ran away. And uh, as a subhanAllah said this, uh, poor Amjabar, he would have given him 50 pounds and keep quiet. <laughs> he risked his life. So, but, but I think I always remember when I remember about Amjabar, but he was calm, subhanAllah. <coughs> he managed to make a call while the guy was <laughs> 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 So, the only thing, great thing I did was actually I jumped the car and I took his hand to defend him. So, <laughs> but, you know, otherwise, to be honest, subhanAllah, he is one of the very few people who sort of touched my heart and, you know, and I would always uh, remember uh, about his manners, his akhlaq, and the way his ethics, uh, he does his work. Um, he's very one of the very few people who doesn't like backbiting or say anything. Even so, he gives and he sees things that he might not like, but he just teaches himself unless he's something serious, maybe he raises with the management. Otherwise, he's not the one who spreads the rumors or anything like that. Otherwise, you know, being at the reception, you can see everything was going on and turned out. Like uh, Ismail said, you know, sit down there. <laughs> so, uh, all I would say is, Brother uh, Jabbar, uh, may Allah bless you, may Allah reward you for everything you have done uh, for Islamic life and for humanity. And I wish you all the best with your retirement. And if you want to know what to do and how to keep yourself busy, uh, have a brief experience now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brother Nasser. Thanks a lot. Okay, I think next we have a video recording from Dr. Muhammad Ashmawi. He was oh. our CEO before Brother Nasser. This is the end of an era for Islamic Relief. I can't imagine how the building would look like without Abdul Jabbar there, receiving everybody with a beautiful smile. May Allah reward you for everything you've done over these years, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join us under his mercy in the Jannah and Firdaus one day. Yeah, yeah. Assalamu alaikum, your brother Muhammad Ashma. Inshallah. That was short and sweet. Uh, I miss Dr. Ashmawi. <laughs> uh, next, I think we have Brother Wasim, our current CEO. Please, Brother Wasim. I know, sequence got messed up, sorry. I don't know where to start, but uh, I heard about Brother Abdul Jabbar in 2002 in the desert of Lochistan when Dr. Hani was snoring in front of uh, seat, the car and I was sitting behind. I was a young project officer, very young that time. There was uh, in the middle of nowhere, if you know the southwestern province of Pakistan, Afghanistan border, it's like uh, you drive for miles and miles, you hardly see any settlement or uh, cars passing by. Dr. Hani asked me, how many hours left? I said, just one hour. You are saying to me for last five hours, one hour left for 30 minutes. And uh, then uh, on the way, about six and a half hours journey from Quetta, uh, the capital, provincial capital, to a place, Kharan, where we're doing a water project. 
So Dr. Hani was sharing stories how they started, as like Mashallah Dr. Hani does in terms of Tarbiya and the new employee. Uh, he still got a picture with me with a slim guy standing with a moustache and uh, once he showed me, you remember this guy 22 years ago and uh, I said yes, probably I remember. So I don't want to see this picture, now I see myself in the mirror so it's a completely different person. So he mentioned Uqdar Jabba, he said we have a face of Islamic belief, mashallah. I said, who is person Uqdar Jabba? And uh, when you, sometimes you know we have this thing, okay, must be a person who is like a picture in a reception when you enter Islamic leaf or what like uh, Abdul Jabbar when you enter and he's a face of Islamic leaf. I was just thinking about Abdul Jabbar, do you remember I came in building 2004 and uh, he said no I don't remember. <laughs> was, uh, this area was uh, just like uh, you can sit and have a burger uh, but that Yusuf is sitting here, he bought me a burger. So he brought a burger, I don't know if he remembers or not in 2004. I was studying in Bradford University. I came on a scholarship to do my degree in project planning and management from Pakistan. And uh, he invited me to come over. So I got off from a coach uh, and Afan and Yusuf, they welcomed me. Afan was a regional program manager, uh, Asia. So obviously he was my boss. I'm not his boss. So, and uh, he said to me, um, uh, you know, Ali Sabdur Jabbar, I met Abdul Jabbar. Abdul Jabbar looked like me, very composed person, organized, looking like as brother. Um, uh, Ismail said, and I shook hand with him. He said, Go up there. I asked, I want you to No more talk. Right? <laughs> go there. There was a stairs, you go up. And uh, okay. So then I asked, uh, Who is this person? Abdul Jabbar. Ah, he's Abdul Jabbar that Dr. Henry mentioned in 2002. So, but I think, mashallah, Abdul uh, Jabbar being there is like a fatherly figure sitting at your front desk and keeping an eye on and subhanAllah that time flies by then I joined Islamic Leaf Fair in 2011 uh, in IPD then I started meeting Abdul Jabbar then sharing stories what's happening in Yemen what's happening in the US and Abdul Jabbar always say that you know everything in the world is going you know little politics in the morning how is Yemen? Kef Yemen? Abdul Jabbar will tell me how the Yemen Story. is I went to Germany in 2015 and uh, got back and then I shared some of my things with Jabba, uh, that how the Yemen was and how they are fine and then praying every morning for Yemen and people of Yemen, uh, mashallah. But always I found Brother Jabba very composed, doing his job and men of few words, but those few words are full of wisdom. Not like me going around and moaning about things. Uh, mashallah, this is one of the greatest thing I observed in the bar. One, one day I just entered office in the morning and when I was given the role as a CEO, sometimes I say that the boss is here, I'm not boss. Okay, will greet me, hug me, uh, make sure to check my temperature in COVID times and uh, then Abdul Jabbar said to me, he was seen. These queries I get from donors, I sent them. You remember Abdul Jabbar once said to me? They called me but nobody listens, nobody really their donors query. I don't know what will happen. And I was thinking last night exactly this thing. <coughs> because Brother Jabbar was really looking after this donor care, mashallah. People who are calling, asking for donation, giving donation. And last night I was worried, who will actually do that? I need to ask Tarak actually. So I said that, who's going to do that? All these linkage, all the queries, and with his wealth of experience and knowledge. SubhanAllah, you don't get this. We, we feel when organization is going on and people are moving on, but you feel that when they are not there. You see the real difference when they are not there. And I think that's, mashallah, our dear brother Jabbar embodies everything. He is an organization himself, mashallah. Amen. Amen. I try to keep uh, brother Jabbar, please come as a mentor. Yeah. Inshallah, he will continue volunteer. I'm going to have a side meeting with him. Inshallah, two <laughs> days. I'm still, I'm still collecting money and take it to the shop for a couple of hours. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, will be for our induction program. Uh, Ali Roni is listening. We need to have the Jabbar session in our induction program, and I'm working Inshallah on this. And I think this is what we need to carry forward, the message of this organization. This organization is not an ordinary organization. And some of my brothers and sisters, young faces, mashallah, I can see they join the organization. 
This organization is a mission. It's a family. That once you are there, once you are part of a family, you don't want to run away from the family. And I think Brother Jabbar will continue bringing this, inshallah, light and sunshine. May Allah SWT protect him and give him, inshallah, all the health and wealth of this dunya and akhirah. This morning I was coming to office and my son uh, Fahad, uh, some of you probably met him, he's 16 and Brother Nasser of course met him because he responded to Brother Nasser when he was CEO. We had a very good, we need to start this, we brought people to bring our children, right? We did one day and Brother Nasser was CEO. So Brother Nasser asked that, you know, okay, what your father does? He said you know, he goes on business trips, something like he responded to Brother Nasser, he just goes around. A few years back now, he's mashallah 16. This morning I told him, you know, who, have, who I'm going to say goodbye today uh, temporarily because he will not be regularly coming. Inshallah, his father. He said, who? Brother Jabbar. <gasps> Uncle Abdul Jabbar. I said, why? He said, I was messing around when I came in office. The person said to me, sit there, right? <laughs> 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 Him and uh, two other uh, children, I think one was a fan son, I forgot, and the last probably. So he said that, sit there. So, and then we let you. He said that then Uncle Waheed came. So, Waheed did be. He gave us a chocolate. So, <laughs> so I'm going on a farewell of Brother Jabbar. So Brother Jabbar, Jazakullah khairan. We can't say enough thank you. And say Brothers uh, Nan said and Brother uh, Dr. Ihab and Brother Harun and Brother Tai, Brother Saleh say, Jazakullah khairan. Inshallah, you will always will be in our hearts and duas, but you always be here with us as our fatherly figure of this organization. Jazakullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, Brother Masim. Um, I think we will maybe give the floor to, before you go, Sister Shaheen, Sister Shaheen please, coach you at the right time. <laughs> please. No, no, no. Sister, I, I stand here to, I, that's it, alhamdulillah. Please. Otherwise, I stand next to you. I told you. Sorry, I've got to. No, no, no. You got us. <laughs> you got us. <laughs> Assalamualaikum everyone, um, Brother Abdul Jabbar, it's really sad to see you go after 39 years. Um, you have been constant. Um, when I used to come back from USA, you were there. You were there to help us uh, during our difficult times as well. But one of the things I think most of you will know, for so those of us who work in the office, is the station recovered. <laughs> I'm Brother Abdul Jabbar. Brother Abdul Jabbar, when I wanted that black and red, <laughs> Writing pad, you said no. <laughs> you can't take that one. And I said, Brother Abdul Jabbar, I, I need this one because I can write better in it. And he goes, Show me your writing. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to go and get my book to show him my writing. And by that time, he disappeared somewhere. Um, came back and I showed him my writing. And then he said, He looked at me and he said, Hmm. No. <laughs> so, I mean, this is the value of an individual who really takes things seriously. I mean, I didn't get the pocket pad, nor did I get the black and red diary. I got a normal, ordinary writing pad. And then I asked for a pen. And uh, I said to Brother Abdul Jabbar, please, can I have this pen because the other one breaks? And he said, you know, sister, we are responsible for every single thing in this station we have it. <laughs> and uh, I took the pen and I said, you know, I'm going to come back for staples. He said, bring your stapler. <laughs> Show me which staples. So I brought back my stapler and he gave me the staples. But Brother Abdul Jabbar, I wanted to thank you for taking care of even the little things in the office. I mean, when we talk about the little things, I'm talking about staples and I'm talking about pens. And I'm talking about paper. But everything that he did... It was an amana for him, and it was a big responsibility for him. And I think this is what this organization is. For many of us, this organization is a mission. And I think Brother Abdul Jabbar took us on that journey many, many times. Jazakallah khair, Brother Abdul Jabbar. And inshallah, we wish you all the best in your retirement. And please do come back and visit us and give us your words of wisdom as well. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much, Sister Shaheen. Thanks a lot. Uh, next, we have uh, Dr. Osam joining us online, I think. Dr. Osam, if you can hear us, please unmute and speak. Dr. Osam is online. 
Yeah, Dr. Assam, can you hear us? Alaikum salam, we can hear you as well, please. Okay, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Salaam Alaikum, 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 Salaam and what the Dr. Hani told me that come to the real street, take a taxi, and uh, come to the reception, there is someone called Abdul Jabbar who will take you to the uh, office. And you know, uh, before I know, I knew three people who, their name uh, uh, were Abdul Jabbar, and all of them were very big, muscular, and uh, you know the name itself is uh, very scary. So when I came to look at Abdul Jabbar and I found Brother Abdul Jabbar with a smile, he knew that I am coming and Dr. Hani uh, gave him uh, an instruction to take me upstairs. MashaAllah, very nice person. That was uh, 10, 25 years ago and since then my brother Abdul Jabbar, my friend Abdul Jabbar, my, group, my colleague Abdul Jabbar did it ever changing. He is there, dedicated, committed. Of course, Abdul Jabbar, indeed, we are not celebrating you going, or uh, retiring from Islamic belief. Uh, it, is, it is not a good day, it is a sad day to see this generation who actually established this great organization living. But this is the life. I believe that we celebrate today uh, some sort of commitment, dedication, kindness, uh, someone who, mashallah, uh, sacrificed all his work life to an organization like the country. And because of you and the others, uh, this sincerity, this uh, commitment, and very close to the values and the the uh, mission of this organization, so we are here because of uh, people like you, Brother Abdul Jabbar. Uh, so it is also a message to you, to everyone here, hearing us. You see, all CEOs uh, uh, are here now, uh, saying what he deserves to be blessed. So, whatever position you are in, whether you are a CEO, chair of the board or uh, the, the boardroom taking the difficult decision or in the reception. You are valued and you are respected because what you are doing right to this organization and for the sake of uh, working on behalf of uh, the kind hearts of our donors and on behalf of the needy worldwide. Uh, it is uh, an issue of wafa of this organization. You know wafa in English, in, in, in Arabic, that the name is really, really, very difficult to translate it into English, but it is some sort of real recognition to the people who are sacrificing to this organization. It is here as a sign when the people uh, talk about you, Abdul Jabbar, and the people like you. Uh, it is an indication of what is waiting for you, inshallah, on the day of judgment when you get uh, that, that recognition, inshallah. Uh, you know, you know uh, sometimes you, you see on the, uh, some of our brothers and sisters in this organization, their photos uh, are not in our uh, manual or our uh, website or the annual reports, but they are recognized and they are there. Some, some or many people may don't know them, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows them. I remember when Umar bin Khattab once after uh, a battle asked uh, the uh, uh, leader of the army who actually we lost on this 
Bible and he told him we lost this person and that person and put number of names and by the end of his speech he said that and the other that we don't know no, the name. them and the Umar ibn Khattab said uh, we don't need to know their names but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows their names uh, Abdul Jabbar I know that someone like me like the Quhani and the others who are uh, uh, put their lives for this uh, cause, they will never retire. I know that. I know that you will never retire, but you change your position from the full-time work to support the organization in other capacity, and I am happy to hear that uh, you will be part of the induction we give to the generation of regeneration. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your deeds and reward you with the best here, inshallah, baraka in your life, baraka in your uh, age, baraka in your family, Amen. as well as Amen. good reward in the day of judgment. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and Thank you very much, Dr. Osam. Dr. Osam is our director of Humanitarian Academy for Development, and Sister Shaheen is our head of uh, advocacy. She spoke earlier. Next, I think we have a video recording from Brother Afan, who is, I think, uh, on leave overseas. Uh, no, uh, Brother Javed will join us to officers here. That was Baza Afan, our International Programs Director. Next is our Network and Resource Development Director, Braza Adnan. Braza Adnan, please. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Do you have a hand up, Dr. Adnan? So, yeah, after Braza Adnan, we will go to the online colleagues. Yeah. Please, Braza Adnan. Um, it's really just to follow on from, mashallah, some of the comments that have been made earlier. Um, mashallah. Sheikh Abdul you've been not just the uh, literal gatekeeper for Islamic belief, but also in a figurative sense. Um, you know, sometimes when we look at some of the, the jobs that individuals do and so forth, we sometimes forget um, that the organization was built not just from the efforts of individuals, but from the baraka that came into the organization. Uh, the baraka from Allah SWT. And sometimes we, we forget the sources of such baraka. And I've got no doubts, mashallah, that Sheikh, you are one of these sources that brought in the baraka into the organization, which enabled it to, to, to grow in the way that it has grown. No. And, and sometimes you know, we can get stuck on the, the individual actions that you know, we do and so forth. But actually, without the blessing of Allah SWT, without this baraka, our actions don't mean anything. And without doubt, you know, one, one of the fears that we have now is that, you know, if the source of Baraka, one of the sources of Baraka is, 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 is stepping away, 
where will this barakah come from? So we, we ask uh, that you continue to remember us in your du'as so that we can all benefit from this barakah. Inshallah, that, that your presence uh, over the past 40 years has brought. Thank you so much, Brother Adnan. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah, I think Dr. Adel is hand, his yeah. hand is up. Maybe we can. Dr. Adel, can you hear us? Dr. Adel used to be a, one of our former directors of facilities and one of the first starters of the organization. Dr. Adel, please, we can hear you. Go ahead. Unmute. Dr. Adel, can you hear us? Yeah. Please go yes, ahead. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Uh, okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa'adhan salatu wassalam ala Sayyidina wa Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tayyidin wa tayyidin. I'm very glad uh, to be part of the uh, uh, gathering for this uh, occasion for uh, Brother Abdi Jabbar. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't uh, join you at the meeting. Uh, but here I am, I'm uh, currently in Cyprus, uh, delivering some courses and, uh, and work on uh, halal uh, industry. So, temporarily I'm here, and uh, I'll come to greet Brother Abdul Jabbar when I come back to the UK, inshallah. Uh, Brother Abdul Jabbar, I know him from <laughs> back in the 80s when. Islamic Relief has started, uh, Alhamdulillah, and uh, he was one of the pillars of Islamic Relief. Uh, I always enjoy, uh, enjoy uh, talking to Brother Abjambar because of his uh, dedication, because of his commitment, because of his uh, faithfulness to the work of Islamic Relief. Uh, when we when we started back uh, in the days of Islam uh, uh actually uh, we met the people who came uh, to work uh, uh, really uh, with a lot of dedication, and that is how Islam Tariq uh, has started. With the blessing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the peace from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, that uh, the organization has expanded to the way it is now because of the uh, commitment that the people when uh, at the start. And mashallah, I can hear that uh, the people inherited that commitment nowadays. The workers of Islamic Relief work worldwide uh, inherited that uh, commitment to the, to the hard work of, uh, of Islamic Relief workers. Uh, I always uh, consider uh, Brother Abdul Jabbar as a, not only colleague, but as a teacher. Uh, and he taught us a lot of uh, principles. Uh, he taught us a lot of uh, uh, characters that, uh, that uh, uh, we, should, we should follow. May Allah bless you, Brother Abdul Jabbar. Have a great time in your retirement. I have to make my um, my uh, uh, talk short to leave it to the others, and uh, because I have I have another meeting now, uh, I have to go to, and uh, I'll make it short. And may Allah bless you all. So I uh, I can I can see you. Um, he is another another example for us and a teacher for us uh, all. Uh, may Allah bless you all. My salam to everyone who attended the. The meeting and uh, see you inshallah at one location. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Thank you, Dr. Adel. B good to hear your voice. Um, Brother Tufil, is he joining online or video yeah, recording? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then we have a video recording from our UK director, Brother Tufil.
Sheikh Abdul Jabbar, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm so sorry that I couldn't be there in person today. We have uh, a very important meeting at the, at the same time as, as your leaving do, so my apologies. But I want to thank you for everything that you have done to make this organization the, the, the global player in the humanitarian field we live today. I always say that this organization was built on the shoulders of giants like you, like Dr. Hani, because of your struggles, because of your hard graft in the earlier days. We today have an organization, an institution, we have structure, we have budgets, we have an office, um, and our lives are there will be made much easier. We're, we're allowed to do our job uh, as a result of the struggles that you uh, had, had, to, had to go through. And, we're forever indebted to you, my brother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of your wonderful efforts. I mean, and this is all going to be a sort of a jari for you, inshallah. I mean. sort of a jari for you and for your family. So one of the good that is done within our offices, and I know you are, UK offices are, our park offices, our field offices, from, you know, from, from the prayers that are, that are done within the offices to the, the good prayers that are to the planning, the efforts that are, that are made to, to help people um, across the world, and then of course the actual efforts to save lives and to and, and to develop lives across the world. This is all, inshallah, a sabbat ajayah for you and for your family. My brother, we are, I say again, we are forever indebted to people like you, Sheikh Abdul Jabbar, like Dr. Hani. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your family always and your future generations. Amen, Ya Rabb. Yazakallah wa khayr. Assalamu alaykum. That was Brother Tufail. And seeing next, we have a video recording from Brother Fadi Aitani. Uh, here it says he has been our first employee and he held so many roles at Islamic Relief. By the time I start counting it, it will take a minute. But most recently, he was our communications director before leaving Islamic Relief again. <laughs> That was Brother Fadi. He is currently, I think, CEO of the Muslim Charities Forum. Um, is Brother Aflak online? Brother Aflak, are you online?
I think he is not. Uh, okay. Okay, then in this case, we will go to a video recorded message from Raza Anwar Khan. He was one of our first starters at Islamic Relief as well. And I think he's currently president of Islamic Relief USA. That was Brother Anwar. Before, I think that we are done with the online recordings, and now we will pass on the microphone to uh, colleagues who are here with us. Before that, I just wanted to thank people who have organized it, uh, Sister Yasmin, Sister Sitara, Sister Shukri, Sister Ghazala, and uh, I hope I did not forget anyone's name, Brother Shah and Brother Jamiat, and uh, Sunil and Ibrahim, of course. Yourself. Okay. <laughs> That would be embarrassing. I was yeah. thinking that I shouldn't touch this in case if it falls down. That would be kind of, yeah. So, yeah, next, I think with, uh, after Brother Anwar, I think it's only fair to have Brother Jahangir to speak next. He probably started at the same time, if not earlier. Brother Jahangir used to be our former UK director and held many, many, many roles. So I'll just say the least, uh, not least, the last role that he held with us. Please, Brother Jahangir. <laughs> Uh, this is a truly momentous day and a momentous occasion in which we are proud and blessed to be upon a, a blessed gathering. But Dr. Dubar, when I came in uh, 1991 as a volunteer at Mosley Road, doing the envelopes, and you give us the envelope, we take the envelopes, we put them in, we pass them, them across. Dr. Hani used to send me, bring his fish and chips for the... Yeah, he used to send me fish and chips for the... Yeah, he used to send me fish and chips for the... What's the road? We enjoyed the fish and chips, but most importantly, we enjoyed the company that we uh, were blessed to be a part of. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you in those great and wonderful, beautiful uh, days uh, of struggle. One thing that's a constant is in an ever-changing world, 1991-92, Bosnia started, it was driving trucks and filling up this warehouse full of clothes to the top. Abdul Jabbar was there, he used to have this uh, chain to open the gates. Mm. Abdul Jabbar, you'd, you'd beep, you'd travel three, four times up and down the country, bring the trucks, bring the 
uh, clothes and everything here, and the bar would open it, no matter what time of the night, to go for the uh, Khalid Mawallad's father, and uh, these two brothers were here constantly, 24-7, okay, all the time, opening, closing, dropping, receiving us, and making us feel like a part of something very, very, very special. And that feeling can't be described in words, it can only be felt in emotions, that doesn't require words, and that's why Abdul Jabbar isn't a man of huge amount of words, because he's a man of huge amount of feeling, that we know that when you meet with him, it doesn't need words, it just has a connection, and that's why when all the donors used to come, give the donation of the Jabbar, receive it, Sakala khair, write it down, pass it to Karnavals. So in the four decades, can you imagine how many donors he's met, how many disasters he's witnessed and disasters that he's been a part of since that day, from those days, from Bosnia, stand to now, this horrible time, difficult time for the people of Turkey and uh, Syria, where the Salah, the Zabakha and the team are doing a phenomenal job, and the constant has been of the Jabbar. Imagine all the blessings and barakah that has passed through his hands, witnessed with his eyes, and felt with his heart. And Brother Adnan, I just end with this, when you mentioned you don't know where the Barakah comes from. For me, immediately when you said that, the Surah of Kawthar comes to mind as an abundance of a river. Of the Jabbar, you were like the river in which that people, or all of us, benefited from. And um. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you to drink from the river in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you in abundance. And Please forgive us for our shortcomings. Um, I used to walk in and he used to say, Mr. Manager. <laughs> but I know, deep inside, there was a deep love there. And we had an utmost admiration for him. And we thank you for everything that you've done of the Jabbar. May Allah subhanahu wa bless you in abundance and reward you. So two places I used to see him. Constantly here and constantly at the Amana. At night and Ramadan and Taraweeh. Abdul Jabbar was there, so mashallah, he was in two blessed places and um, making the world a better place. Thank you very much. Some colleagues are not on the list, but I think if they want, uh, Sister Samira, Sister Mahdia, would you like to say anything? You were the pioneers of Islamic relief. You know, we didn't have too many sisters at that time in the early days. Do you want to say anything? Please come forward, Sister Samira. Please. Bismillah, please. If you don't want to come here, you can speak from there. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. In this case, maybe I'll ask Sister Firdos because she is in the list, so you have to. Sister Rome? Sister Firdos. Please. Ah, Firdos? Yes. Bismillah, mashallah. Not much of a speaker. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I joined in 2009. Uh, to do a strategy conference for Islamic Relief, um, international one. And during my time there, uh, I was, uh, I met Abdul Jabbar. Um, he saw me work and uh, most people saw how I performed. And during this time, he named me, um, he gave me a name of uh, Iron Lady. Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> Thatcher. Whenever he saw me, he always called me Iron Lady. And during my time serving the three CEOs and the board of trustees, he was always there uh, to help me. Whatever I needed, he was always supportive towards me because he knew how hard I was, hard working. So he recognized that. And during this time, he was always very, very supportive. Whenever I needed anything, there was no no's. It was always a yes from him. Um, I'm lucky to have worked with him. Uh, whenever I've met him during, uh, since I've uh, departed uh, from Islamic Relief, he's always uh, welcomed me with um, a smile. So I'm really happy to be here for him, especially, uh, to thank him for his uh, hard work. You know, it's not easy uh, doing what you're doing for 40 odd years. So uh, I wish him all the best. I, and I want to uh, wish him the best of both worlds, in this world and the next. Inshallah. And his family. Thank you, Jazak. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, we have Raza Nasr Rafik next. He used to be our uh, former director of finance and uh, services, I think. Please, Brother Nasr. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm Raza Nasr Rafik. I'm a former director of finance and uh, services. Uh, I'm a former director of finance and uh, services. I'm a former director of finance and uh, services. I'm a former
Bila Amin, a slaughter of Islam, Rabbi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for uh, inviting me. After so powerful uh, presentations, uh, what shall I say? I think there are two things that I would like to say. And I think it's following on from what Brother Adnan uh, said, that uh, as an as a organization, you can have the best uh, organizations that serve God. They have this arrangement with God, that you can have the best governance, the best financial control, but if you don't have sincerity and loyalty, Allah does not save you. And the only reason why those organizations are saved is because Allah saves them. And this is what my bless, uh, you know, like what you call it, uh, belief is. And Allah saves those organizations because of the sincerity and loyalty of, the, of a staff like Brother Abdul Jabbar. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, during the bulldozing years uh, I had with the Islamic belief, uh, the private discussions I used to have with Nasser al used to be about, the, about this about the sincerity and loyalty of, of staff and, and it's not about you know the, the directors that are sitting on the on the tables and you know like on, on, on government you know uh, uh, bodies and all sorts no no it's staff like the uh, brother of the Jabbar when crisis comes it's their sincere and loyalty that attracts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, 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 help and protection and when Sister Yasmin rang me to say that the Jabbar is leaving I suddenly felt it in my heart, and what I felt was, oh my God, who's going to save Islamic belief now? If Dr. Jabbar is not there, what, you know, the protection of us, Muhammad uh, may do. So I completely agree with all the brothers uh, that, that uh, basically made this uh, lesson. The last thing I would want to say, Brother Abdul Jabbar is the first finance and corporate services director of Islamic belief world. <laughs> was filling his shoes. And I don't think we were able to fill his shoes because the responsibility of the sincerity and loyalty was too, too, too uh, great of an example. So, Brother Abdul Jabbar, Jazakallah uh, for, from uh, everybody, myself, and you know, like, uh, may Allah give you the best Jazakallah for the work that you did. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you all so much for respecting three to five minutes, honestly. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, is Brother Javed after will be able to join us or not? He's still stuck in the seminar. Okay, sure. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Then in this case, I think next speaker is, again, our former finance and services director, Brother Sultan, who has unfortunately left us a few years ago. Please, Brother Sultan. <laughs> it felt like a year, <laughs> at least. I would like to thank you all for inviting me on this great occasion of celebrating a great marathon of this brother uh, service Islamic Relief for 39 years. Which is our brother um, Abdul Jabbar for gifting this organization the blessings and the barakah that everyone we talked about. I was fine structured from 2019 to 2021, so I had the, the honor and the blessing to have to look after the director of facilities. And my recollection of him is particularly the biggest frustration. It's not an easy job, as Brother Nasser Rafiq knows. I picked up after the bulldozing had happened and had to rebuild <laughs> after that. But um, the biggest um, tension that you have in the morning coming into work and the biggest stress is when those shutters don't open. <laughs> so uh, Brother mentioned they, they were manually pulled in certain days and then they become digital. And when you park your car and then the shutters don't open, there's a bit of frustration. But when I used to go around and, and just tap on their smile that I used to give, I used to just take all that tension and, and grief away and you just go, and it's open now. <laughs> and this person's been smiling, and I think people mention about the smile. The Prophet said they even smile is, is, a, is a charity. And this person has been giving the, that charity to many if not thousands of people in the community. So I would just like to thank you for, for your particularly during my reign as well, and for your smiles, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you in this world and the hereafter, and um, we wish you all the best, inshallah, for whatever you, you wish to do in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have another a titan of Islamic relief, Brother Muhammad Tariq. Who has been with us for? He is not Where here. Sorry. Oh, he's, he's come back. Yes. Yeah. 
Assalamu alaikum. Where do I start? For me, I think it's a, a mixed day of emotions, to be honest. On the one hand, there's joy. Someone, mashallah, who's uh, um, you know, a leader in terms of when it comes to leaving a legacy behind of humanitarian work. How, how to, you know, the one man show, this is Abdul Jabbar. Uh, the sad news for me is, is the fact that he's part of my team, an integral part of my team. Uh, for years, alhamdulillah, I've worked with Abdul Jabbar, and he's been the angel at the door, alhamdulillah. Every morning, he's in his routine. He comes in, he sits down, he puts his sandwiches away, gets his uh, cup of tea, sits down, switches the computer on, reads some ayats of the Qur'an, and straight away he, he's you know, set in his way, alhamdulillah. So for me, on the one hand, alhamdulillah, you know, it's good, uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to be working with him, but I've lost a friend, a father figure, a person I confided in so much, inshallah. So for me, it's, uh, and the team as a whole, it's such a big loss. I mean, when I found out initially that he was retiring, the first thing I did when Shah told me, um, I took him aside and go, who's upset you? <laughs> Is it for me? Has he been, has he been <laughs> you? I, he is again for eight hours in, and you can't take it anymore. But alhamdulillah, he wasn't that. And then, um, after, uh, you know, so this was going on for about two years now. So I've been trying to hold on to him, hold on to him. And since then COVID kicked in. And after COVID, uh, you know, same thing. He had a taste of independent life, being away from the office, and he wanted, you know, to do his travelling on the buses as he likes. Um, so what we thought was then, okay, we'll reduce the number of days. So then the hybrid working came in from five days, we went to three days, and then he was still not letting go. I need to rest now. I need to rest. I said to him, no, 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 even if it's for one day, he goes, no, no, no. Then I had no choice. I had, no, uh, I had a chat, chat with Brother Joel. I said, we have, we have to call the big guys in. So first was obviously Dr. Hani. He got involved to try to keep him and whatever. That was a no, no. Then I used the, I pressed the nuclear button. I, I sat with Sister Saber and I said, look, I need him. And she goes, look, mom wants him out the house. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my nuclear button. So I tried everything to keep him. Alhamdulillah. I mean, there's a lot of work to do where we've got this beautiful 40 years of uh, institutional memory through the archives. And Abdul Jabbar is the right person, but he's assured me, inshallah, he's going to come in and help us and support us. But to be honest with you, I, I'm really going to miss him. I've learned so much from him. Um, and it's been an honor, honor and a privilege. And I wish you a happy retirement, inshallah. And. Uh, it, I'll probably will get you a set of keys cost, cut just in case you want to come into the building or whatever. And, uh, you know, reception is always ready and waiting for you. Alhamdulillah, we've had instances where I've had people come into reception where they've refused to give donations unless they hand it over to Abdul Jabbar. So that's a, a testament to who we're doing. <coughs> Thank you, Abdul Jabbar. Yes, I had Brother Abdurrahman Barachi here, but he left. Oh, he is here. Please, Brother. Well, no, we can make, we can make you up to speak. I thought Rabbit was, but I'm just going to follow this one now of um, my two colleagues. Just to stay around my ear. <laughs> my words are going to be private. Come here, come here. The last is already being said. Because nobody can hear you. We need to see you. <laughs> Brother Abdurrahman is our guardian from all times. He protected us so many times. Mashallah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, um, I had actually refused to actually say a public statement, and so whatever I'm going to say is uh, completely off the cuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, what more can I say after what all my colleagues have already said? Um, perhaps the only thing I can perhaps comment on is disputing what my good friend Nasser Rafika said in saying that uh, Abdul Jabbar was the uh, first finance and services director. I would actually say I'd go much, much further than that. You're actually the programs director. You're actually the comms director. You're actually the facilities director. And maybe, Dr. Hani, you can confirm this, but when you were traveling abroad, you were acting as the CEO as well. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and I, I think I can say that because Abdul Jabbar's relationship with me goes back all the way to 1992. I was 21 years old, I think, at the time, okay. uh, at university. And Abdul Jabbar, I'm going to finish perhaps on this by saying that there's a lot of things that you did for me which you know about, but there's a lot of things which you actually said and you went along the way and shared with me. And I truly thank you for all of that. I absolutely thank you. You will not realize what an influence you've been on my life and the guidance you gave me in my early days. And I ask your forgiveness for anything which I may have said and done over the years, which um, may have upset you. Maybe I ran into the office and I know I've upset a lot of people in my time. But I ask your forgiveness, but uh, may Allah bless you, bless your family. And bless the Islamic Relief family as a whole. Thank you, brother. Uh, sorry for forcing you to speak, but you are one of those people who need to speak. We have the Okay. Uh, yeah, why not to give a chance to colleagues who are joining online? Uh, can you hear us, brother Zaid? Alaykum salam. We can hear you as well. Please go ahead. <laughs> Mashallah, it's not much to say except Abu Jabbar, Jabbar, my for everything you've uh, you've done for a lot of us when we're having frustrating moments and things aren't working. We say the line: the only reason this organisation is moving forward is because Abu Jabbar is reading Quran in the morning. That was a, a, an often repeated, uh, <laughs> an often repeated quote. So Jazakallah for all your efforts, your time, your uh, the, the smiles in the morning and the genuine kind of care for the organization and often we people forget the what many of us now have kind of been able to do and are able to do and the many people we're serving is only possible because people like you and Dr. Hani and others uh, built the foundations when things were hard nobody everyone looks at what we have now and you know what we're enjoying now as a collective and as a group but the early days when you guys were coming in, it was so uncertain, so unstable. I think you took a kind of below minimum wage salaries. Um, so I want to award you uh, abundantly, all of all of you who founded this early. And I'll, I'll end with a positive. Everything good that comes and has come since Dr. Hani and you and others first started doing what you're doing, inshallah, will be a part of your uh, reward if our, if our intentions are pure when we meet Allah Azza wa Jalla. Uh, as long as that intention is pure, everything that's been possible now, everything that Asim and his team are doing now, uh, everything that's happening in Turkey, all of it uh, goes back to uh, you folks who were the true pioneers, the true founders, the guys who kind of led the way when there was no way, uh, put in the sacrifices and put in the genuine, true kind of work when nobody else, you know, you were mocked, laughed at, kind of scorned, scorned looked at as a small thing, was this a small little thing, and now it's in global giant and so so much credit to you and Dr. Hani and others who, who were the early founders, some aren't even in this room um, because nothing we, nothing we do can ever truly say thank you but actually if your intentions are pure then what you will see before Allah Azza wa Jalla on the day of your meeting will be suffice for you and for Dr. Hani and other founders who made what we have now possible. Thank you Brother Zayd. Uh, Brother Zaid, until most recently, was the CEO of Islamic Relief Canada. I'll also try to read some of the online messages, and I will read um, messages from the sisters only. So, Sister, Sister Shirin writes, uh, Brother Abdul Jabbar, you'll be missed so much. I feel so much love and happiness knowing how much you gave to IR since the start. May Allah reward you uh, abundantly. We also have message from Sarah we have a lot of Sarahs in the organization, mashallah. So it's Sarah Curtis. She writes, Brother Abdul Jabbar, coming to the IR building is like coming into the family home, to your extended family, with your favorite uncle waiting at the door <laughs> to welcome you, greet you with a smile and kind words. You look after us all, and I hope today has shown you the love and respect we all have for you. A true gentleman, humble and hardworking. A role model for us all, you embody our values, but also radiate kindness, dedication, principles, and acceptance. You always make time to make conversation and check on our well-being. You will be sadly missed and hope that you can now enjoy some much-deserved quality time with your family. Hope to see you before you leave. Thank you for everything. That's from Sister Sarah Curtis. 
Um, I saw one more message from a sister, I think it was Sister Kelly. I'll read that as well. Sister Kelly writes, Salam Sabu Jabbar, you have been a steady welcoming presence throughout my time with Islamic Relief. It won't be the same without you. Have a wonderful retirement after your incredible years of service and hope you will come back to visit us sometimes. I did not find any other messages from the sisters, but all the messages are in the chat. Yasmin wants to say no. Yasmin will speak as well, inshallah. I've sent you Javed's Okay, so I'll come to it after the next speaker. I'll have to browse it now. Uh, next speaker is Brother Muhammad Shah, who has directly, I think, line managed Brother Abdul Jabbar. <coughs> Please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, I've known Abdul Jabbar for about 10 or 11 years now, but I think everything that I wanted to say has already been said. But I think one of the things that you realize that is that his sincerity is the most important thing and his smile. And no matter what's going on in your own life, whether it's personal or at work, when you see Abdul Jabbar, you know things are going to be okay. And uh, I think that's one of the things everybody's got things going on, but uh, talking to Abdul Jabbar, taking ad his advice, he's a balance. And um, I've been here about 11 or 12 years, and the organization's gone in various circles, but you always find that there's one constant, and that's Abdul Jabbar. And like Sarah Curtis says, he's always the uncle or the father figure in the, in the house, and when you come in and you feel there's security there. Inshallah, um, He's only leaving Islamic Relief, technically, because he is Islamic Relief, and he'll always be here for all of us. And I think, uh, judging by uh, people's testimonies and by the presence of everyone online and, up and in person, it's just evidence to show that, that some little bit of appreciation. And so, in numbers it's 39 years, but 39 years is a long time. But um, as he's saying to me in the morning, it's gone in a flash. But even as an employee, he was a model employee, he's never given me any trouble, alhamdulillah. I'm responsible for the stationery, of the enforcing that. But, but other than that, he's always served me well, he's served the organization well. And um, I have, uh, all I can say, I was absolutely privileged to uh, work with Abshabad. Okay, before passing over to Sister Yasmin, I think maybe uh, one of the other old timers is Brother Yusuf Kasuji. Of course. Where are you? Here you are, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry to as well. Assalamu alaikum. Um, so I'm probably one of the ones also who's known of the Jabbar for uh, a long time. And I think a lot of, lot of people don't realize that when I joined Islamic Relief, Islamic Relief is going through a stage of growth and rapid growth. And I, th I think many, many people were doing many things at the same time. Abu Jabbar was one of them. As, as I, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, um, as our colleague said, uh, uh, Jabbar managed ICT, legal, finance, projects, everything else. Um, but one of the things I think people may not realize or appreciate fully is that during Islamist growth, the community were the ones who contributed. We didn't have institutional donors. And we had to build a trust amongst the community. And people like Abdul Jabbar were those people that you know, there were Arabs who were not part of the predominantly Muslim Asian community that we had. They won the trust of the, the Muslim community. And as somebody mentioned, um, I used to be fundraiser as well. I used to work for the UK based in reception. Um, and people used to come to donate and ask, specifically ask for the Jabbar. They wouldn't give me the money. Um, and they would talk about, has he left? Is he still here? Um, I think Abdul Jabbar for a period was in, was in finance, so he was upstairs. And, you know, people would, people would can, you, can you call him? And uh, they, would, they, would, they would trust him with that. One other thing, and I think Dr. Hani won't mind me saying this, 
but people haven't spoken about his patients. The early days were, were tough times for Islamic Relief in terms of the work that we had to do. Job descriptions were there, but we were doing lots of other things. But those people that worked under Dr. Hani in the early years would know how tough it was. <laughs> so somebody who was so patient, uh, I think uh, people, people need to recognize that as well. That's a skill that he had, that despite, despite all the pressures and the challenges that he um, continued throughout that. And as people said, I think one of the, one of, one of the, one of the things that stands by me is that in his time where he did have time in between his job, he wasn't surfing the internet and other stuff. He was sitting there reading the Quran, and I think that's that's something that um, we all should learn a lot from. Yes. Again, thank you, uh, Abdul Jabbar, for Dr. Abdul Jabbar. Dr. Abdul Jabbar. Yeah, he's earned that. And I have one suggestion for Wasim and the management, maybe even Dr. Hani, if the organisation can send Abdul Jabbar to some of our field offices to see the fruits of the work. Okay. And though he's been on the front line here, I think for him, I don't know how many field visits, so if you've been on field visits, but if you, if you see that, you'll really, you'll really appreciate all the small bits and, that you and all the volunteers around you were doing that helped build this organization to where it is. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not skill of his yet, but the bar is the description whenever he is ready, inshallah. Thank you, Brother Wasim. It's not a field of it's a country program. Yeah. We have decolonized Islamic Relief a long time ago when others are starting now. <laughs> okay, inshallah. Uh, next, I think we have a message from Brother Javed um, Akhtar, who will not, was not able to join online. He's in an engagement. But he said, please, can you read my words out? Words cannot do justice to the commitment and dedication of uh, Brother Abdul Jabbar a true role model for all of us. I will miss being greeted by his smile when walking into VS Street. That was a message from Brother Javed Akhtar. I'll hand over to Sister Yasmin. Uh, thank you, Abishbal. Um, no. <laughs> 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 but we need to have the other. No, Shabadi. Shabadi, the story, you have to share. I can't tell the story, but But you have to speak as well, Sister. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, I didn't want to really say anything in public, but since Sister Yasmin has put me on the spot, um, many things have been said about Brother Abdul Jabbar. Uh, Jazakallah, Brother Abdul Jabbar. Again, the smiles. Um, we go back, like many, many other colleagues, when I was a 20 year old as a volunteer working with Brother Abdul Jabbar in the accounts department, putting together the, the, the foundation of the PIN code system that we currently use for all our projects. And Brother Shaquille, of course, so uh, that finance director position, I had the privilege of working with Brother Abdul Jabbar uh, at that time. Uh, many things have been said, uh, but Brother Abdul Jabbar, he shares his name with my father. Uh, so every morning we have to come in, of course, Brother Abdul Jabbar always would remind me of my father. It's often the case that, you know, as children, we don't see our fathers in the morning, but of course we see Brother Abdul Jabbar in the morning. So that connection was always there, but all, even stronger. Brother Abdul Jabbar used to uh, 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 attend the same masjid as my father. So there was that connection that I always felt that, uh, as a fatherly figure, of course, generally, but even that closer relationship we had, uh, I, I, again, it, it, he completely put me at ease as a father figure. Um, we're losing Abdul Jabbar in many ways, uh, uh, but again, we're losing our imam as well. Um, you know, we are, alhamdulillah, as Islamic Relief, we are very privileged that we get to pray Salah uh, uh, in Jamaat. Uh, uh, alhamdulillah, we have the privilege of having many uh, Hafiz, Hafiz al Quran uh, in Islamic Relief. Many. But despite all that, whenever Brother Abdul Jabbar would walk in, naturally, the right goes to Brother Abdul Jabbar, the respect, the honor, even beyond the uh, Hafiz al Quran. Uh, and that's a, a testament of the not only respect, but genuine sense that, alhamdulillah, uh, Brother Abdul Jabbar is someone who brings sincerity to the organization. That Barakah everyone has talked about, may Allah subhanahu to continue to reward him and make this um, uh, a sadhaka jariya. Uh, may Allah subhanahu ta'ala uh, uh, spread the Barakah of uh, Brother Abdul Jabbar to all of us and to the work that we do. And may Allah subhanahu continue that Barakah for Islam. Thank you, Brother Shabir. Brother Shabir is our head of Asia region. And uh, Brother Javed, please, briefly. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. Brother Chavez is our head of internal audit. He gave us a lot of troubles. Abu Jiva, you know, for you, I came from Bradford, yeah? <laughs> I've been here since October, but, you know, I've been here 32 years. It's the first time that I'm speaking on, you know, I'm speaking when someone's leaving. Yeah? Well, it's the first time my heart's really felt content to speak. Uh, to, 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 you know, that, I'm not I'm not sitting and losing back in the past. The first time, only sincerely, my heart felt that I have to come and say something. Just like a lack of Abu Oh, yeah, yes. Just like a So um, last Sorry. night I was working till about 11, 12 o'clock doing like the last minute checks and I was like, we're going to ask you to speak so I better have a speech ready and of course I've got some notes ready and I'll probably they'll go out the window for Dr. Jabbar. Um, but the main thing I want to say is... Um, I, uh, like everybody else, um, joined Islamic Relief a very long time ago, 20 years ago, and I walked into reception, and you told me about how you'd been working here for 19 years, and I thought, bloody hell, he looks jolly, doesn't he? <laughs> this looks like a good place to, go, uh, to join. And I remember uh, Brother Imad uh, Mahyouk, who some of you might know, he said, Yasmin, there's this amazing organization, you know, I've got amazing people, Dr. Hani, and... Um, You've got to come. So, yeah, I came in for my interview, also known as a brief chat with Dr. Musa back in the days. And um, I came into reception and there was Abdul Jabbar. And for those of you that remember reception, it used to be where um, the, calen uh, the flags are now. And so you used to have IRUK at the back with Jahangir, Sister Uzma, Abdullah Hancock, pulling out the names now. And next to that used to be business development, and it was such a crammed little, like, family. But it was so nice, mashallah, and I went upstairs, and yeah, I got the job, obviously, and I'm still here. Um, um, but one thing that has remained constant is my friendship with Brother Abdul Jabbar. He's very, very dear to me. He doesn't realize that. When I used to get dropped off before I used to drive, I used to come the front way. And then when I learned how to drive, I used to make a special visit, and I still do, to reception to give my salams to him. And going there this morning and seeing that mastermind chair empty, it really like hit me because I was like, Abdul Jabbar's not here anymore. He doesn't have his cup of tea. He doesn't have his perfectly baked slice cut uh, cake that his wife bakes. Still have not ever managed to get a slice of that. Naseba, <laughs> I need some of that. And then obviously always in observing, you know, either in the prayer room or praying um, the Quran. Um, so Jazakallah hair for that. Um, for your friendship, for your guidance. Also, by the way, that radiator is the warmest radiator in the whole of IRW. So sometimes I should linger about then he's probably thinking, why is this woman still here? Literally just clinging onto it. Um, um, so what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, Abdul Jabbar's famous lines. Call, he'd call me and say, Yasmin, parcel for you. Put the phone down. <laughs> That's me, someone here for you to the phone and I used to go down, right? Up the door, he's not even there. He's in that side room, again, which is a mystery. What is going on in that side room? I've only been in it once in 20 years. I swear facilities have got some secret stash going on in there. But literally, sometimes, like, the person was there and he was like, I'm here to see so-and-so. Absolutely got nothing to do with me. But obviously delegated to me because I was the go-to person. So thank you uh, for that. Um, and also quite recently, Yasmin Tesco delivery here, bang on the phone. So um, I often have covered for Abdul Jabbar as receptionist, thinking, oh, this is quite an easy job, you know, can't be anything too difficult to this. Pick up the phone until some brother comes in and he's like, "Where's Abdul Jabbar?" I'm like, he's not here, and he's like, "Okay, I need to give a donation." Then I'm like. Ah, donation station, Jang, sort it out. That system is just so prehistoric. You are the king of donation stations. I don't know who's got that button now. Is it you, Tariq, or is it you, Shah? God bless you, honestly. So you've got donation station going on. You've got someone come in. Then you've got these secret buttons under reception, and you're scared just in case you, you hit the panic button. And I believe, as in a saver or a sister once, once hit that button, the police came. So I was like, oh, I need to label this. And then um, 
the secret drawers with all these keys, keys for this, keys for that. I'm like, but where is the key for that infamous stationery cupboards with all the pucker pads, with all the best pens and mashallah, all those really nice goodies. And you know what, guys, six years after, I just had to look at AJ and he was like, here you go, Sister Yasmin. He gave me that. So alhamdulillah, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to miss you loads. You know that. But unfortunately, bad news, I'm in contact with Naseb, who's my bestie at work. So we're going to stay in contact. But from the bottom of my heart, it's been a pleasure. You have been like a fatherly figure to us all. And it's just not going to be the same seeing you in reception. Thank you very much, Sister Yasmin. Thank you for coordinating and organizing uh, this event. And uh, many thanks to our management for approving it and uh, supporting it. I'll now hand over to Dr. Hani. Dr. Hani, you can speak more than five minutes, of course. <laughs> and then Brother Abdul Jabbar will. Uh, when we do the video, we want Abdul Jabbar to come here with the scene to watch it. I don't want to watch it on there. Okay. Okay, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Mr. Sama Rasulullah. I never seen saw anybody that the generation of the 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010, and 20 are eager to come and be honored by talking to him and talking about him. It's Abd Jabbar. Abd Jabbar for Islamic Khalif was the Quran recited every day, but the spirit and the soul the mind and the power, the engine and the drive. The challenge for you, Asim, and for any one of you, and every one of you, bring the spirit back to Islamic Khalif. It cannot function on the foundation of a structure and money and program without a spirit to manage, direct, and deliver the message of Islamic Khalif. What Brother Harun was saying about, uh, or Dr. Hussam was saying about, Harun was saying about the honesty of actually keeping the money. Uh, Hussam was talking about the number of shaheed in the battlefield, and Omar did not know the names, and Allah know the names. But I speak about the one who got the treasure, the throne, the gold, the jewelry, of the king of Persia. And he walked the distance between Persia to Medina. Then nobody was him. He could have run away with them. He was Tabi'i, not a Sahabi. And he came to Omar and tell him, Omar, this is Persian throne and the gold. And the man left. Nobody knew him. This was the upbringing or terbiyah of the Prophet ﷺ and of the companion of the Prophet ﷺ and Abd Jabbar is like this man. So really, we have to stand up in honor and dignity for the credibility of the individuals who work harder than any of us, who have the heart to put in the table, have the mind to put in the table, have their family to sacrifice for the sake of Allah to serve the community, and Abd Jabbar is the one. It's for me, and Abd Jabbar were one soul in two bodies. I took my body away, but now the soul is being taken away from Islamic leaf. And they say again, Brother Wasim, leave your messages now. You have a challenge to bring the soul back and the spirit back to Islamic Khalif. We have a lot of families that started Islamic Khalif a long time ago. The family of Abu Jabbar, the family of al Mualid, the family of Radman, the two families of Qureshi, Dr. Shamim Qureshi and Zahur Qureshi's family, the family of Tipu Sultan, the first volunteer, actually, who made the first newsletter for Islamic Khalif at the, uh, at the time of the 80s, late 80s, and the beginning of the 90s. Islamic Leaf was built by families, by community, not by businessmen, not by talented individuals, 
None. It's family and family and family. The wife, the children, the father, the mother, the grandparents were giving their children to Islamic belief. Don't lose the spirit. Otherwise, Islamic belief will become a dead meat. I don't care about how many thousands of people we employ. I care about how many people have the heart to bend their back for the people who are being our salaries, which is the right holders. Never call them anymore beneficiaries. Right holders who are actually the soul and the mind and the heart of each and every one of us. And the al Jabbar representing them today. I'm very happy to see the young people like, uh, what's your name? Jengi Bengi? <laughs> and uh, Shaheen and Mahliya and uh, Samira and, uh, oh, thank you, Brother uh, Arafat, Mount Arafat of coming here. Uh, those people used to come, as well as, uh, what is he? Ja uh, Javid, he said, what's the other one? Abdurrahman Barachia, Yusuf Kasuji, as students in the university. A student's university. So when you look at the journey, the journey never started with one man. Started by those young students. Like Anwar was talking from America, Zaid was talking from Canada, and G was talking from here. Never refer the journey and the success and the achievement to one individual. Even when he came here and was smelling my my bad smell is that I'm a smelly man. No, 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 the shoe was new, <laughs> but you said it doesn't smell right. <laughs> I found in him a talent which I don't have. Many master degree, many languages, a new dimension to go to the area which I love to visit, which is the Central Asian Republic, including other Berjan. You see, when you have a vision, Put the world in front of you and put the light, the life to come in front of you and compare with what you want to do for this world to earn the life to come. That's why when, when he was from Azerbaijan, speak Russian, Azari. Uh, Russian not popular, just be careful. Anyway, what? <laughs> Don't no, put I'm, me in a I'm, 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 I'm talking <laughs> about the history. I'm talking about the history. The history speaks louder than our action. And see, when I go here, and that's what I'm ending with my, I'm ending my speech with this. I'm going to be elevated by standing next to Abd Jabbar. So can I stand next to you, sir? <laughs> I see, stand up. Everybody stands up. Everybody stands up. Because we will be elevated. And Abd Jabbar is one of the people who will always be elevating us with his mission. Because there is a track record for him. Because there is an achievement of him. Because of the milestones of him. Because of a road map that he drew for all of us. So we are all need to have another Abd Jabbar, a third Abd Jabbar, a fourth Abd Jabbar, a fifth Abd Jabbar, to keep elevating us. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Hamid. Dr. Alfi wants to speak. You know what? All the CEOs were competing to speak today the chairman of the board and members of the board of management and board of trustees. This is the value of morality, the value of credibility, and the value of sincerity. Thank you, Abu Jabbar, for bringing everybody to us, inshallah. Thank you, Dr. Afi. Dr. Afi, can you hear us? Yes, Dr. Anthony, if you are speaking, maybe you are on mute. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Assalamu alaikum, please proceed. How's everyone? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. 
Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Rani, for this nice words, really. Uh, I, I, I think that um, uh, Abdul Jabbar, Salaam first Abdul Jabbar, and uh, it has been a very long, fruitful years. And uh, to tell you the truth, my memory, when it goes back to the visits which I used to visit the Islamic Relief at the early days, it's usually I see Abdul Jabbar in the room there every time I visited it, uh, I visited the uh, Islamic Relief in uh, Birmingham. And uh, it is really, when anybody mentioned uh, Islamic Relief, the picture coming to my mind is the picture of Dr. Jabbar sitting in, the, in the, this small office in there. So uh, I think he have done great job, uh, Abdul Jabbar, and uh, uh, my dua that may Allah reward you for for the hard work and uh, uh, he have carried out. And uh, don't forget that God chooses people to really carry, uh, carry out this work. Not everyone really are prepared to uh, work for humanity. And uh, you are really a uh, very uh, kind and human person. May Allah really make it in the end of the, your scale and uh, reward you for all this hard work you have done. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi Thank you, Dr. Rafi. Dr. Rafi used to be one of our long-serving trustees uh, until he left the board. Uh, I know a lot of people want to speak. The, there is an online card which is still available for everyone to put their feedback. But now, Raza Abdul please let's uh, move that way, please, so that you can see a little slideshow the organizers have to oh, you're going, you're going. And Sunil's magical touches, of course. Sit, sit down. Yeah, and I, no, 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 no. no. No, 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 no. Khalas, another one. Yes. And, okay. That's that was
Anything you want to share with us, please. Whatever you want to say. Final word is yours. First of all, I want to tell something my not everyone knows. That Islamic relief is that man. And that man is Islamic relief. We all here are fruits of his seed and plants. That's true. He started organization from nothing to what you see. This is what I have. But about myself, Abdurrahman Farash and my, my, he talk about myself. He knows better than me. He used to come from Warsaw to volunteer work in Islamic Relief. Anyway, what I want to say, it's 39 years past, so quick, like one day. 39 years, my journey was Islamic Relief and Dr. Hani as well. I can, I still remember that what I said, he started from nothing. He used to come the weekend before he got office, before he got an office. Weekend, open the, the box, letter box, taking the all mails, go sit on the uh, prayer, dig, uh, prayer room, uh, hall, still sorting and started sorting out the mails and he used to ask me and other young to people to help him to distribute and that time I have no idea and I said what Dr. Hani want of this? I don't know what <laughs> I have no idea about the charity works and just distribute Anyway, 39 years, I learned a lot of uh, Islamic relief. I, I saw Islamic relief grow from small office to worldwide. Worldwide organization. But, to be honest, my feeling in the past uh, was better than my feeling at the present. Because my feeling, I used, I'm talking about myself, not about anyone. I used to work for charity. But at the present, I work for salary. Working and look at calendar when is 28th and when is my salary is enter my account. I say this because in seasonal projects like uh, such as Ramadan and Qurbani or disaster like what it's happening in Iran like what happened in Turkey at that time. We used to work till one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning. Who would be able now to work till one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock? But we used to work. I remember once I worked with them till one o'clock. 
in the morning because in, in that time no, people cannot die donation online only by phone oh please uh, book me uh, for Trana and I don't know why people stay to two days or three days before eight and then too much pressure please book me for Trana please book me Qurbani please and I remember once I, I, I work with them in till, till one o'clock in the morning I went home and we live, I live the other party, Skarandarani, and the others in the office. And when I came in the morning, Fadi uh, Fadi Skandarani was, what? People not sleeping in this country? <laughs> 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 All night morning. <laughs> we, I, we leave him sleep in the office, and he shouting in the morning, he was, not sleep. What, what happened? He said, um, uh, rats jump into me and it's... Because <laughs> it was t too many rats that day. <laughs> because uh, that's why, uh, you know, people, uh, the uh, donor, they know me. Because they, they don't pass through the, oh, online only they come. We used to work in seasonal project seven, week, seven days a week. Saturday and Sunday. And uh, uh, my wife, Allah reward her, sacrificed her time and children's time. And she used to encourage me. I said, oh, weekend, I will have a rest with you and children. She said, no, because people are working through the week. They have only weeks to come to the office to buy don donation. And, okay, she sent me and then I go. <laughs> <laughs> but once, once I enter the office, I cannot leave. You know. Uh, I, I can't remember, <laughs> I, I used to have a <clears throat> very old car, very old car, even the top is whole and the water, <clears throat> I, I bought a tarmac, on the <laughs> it was, it was uh, embarrassing when I, Dr. Hani sent me to uh, collecting uh, Trusty from a station over by that car. So once <coughs> I leave this car, it was a broken tire. I, I leave it by the office and went home by bus. And then I said to myself, I said, oh my, I hope this car, somebody come steal it. <laughs> so, so I'm sure I'm, Insurance can, insurance can give me 200 in bound or 150. In the morning, I went to the office. No car. <laughs> the car. I, I, I could not see the car. <laughs> so I said, oh, my. Why not I, I hope something else? Why not? Why didn't I, why didn't I wish something else? <laughs> so the car, the car gone, I have, I think, 200 pound from, from insurance. Uh, How was it? all very, very, very old. Oh, I don't know, I can't remember. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, another uh, incident ha happened to me because I used to have uh, collecting donation uh, coins, two bags or three bags full of coins. I took them in my car to the bank. But that time, incidents happened in the, in the bank, around the bank, I don't know. So I went to the, into the bank 
and they reject, they said, because I don't know what's happening. Take the uh, bags back to my car and back to the office. When I finished five o'clock, I went home. So I think the camera CCTV took my flights from around in the bank. They took my flights and they know my address. So when I parked my car and then uh, closed the door and to go to home and someone grabbed me. I think in my five. <laughs> Grab me in my hand. <laughs> he said, "Can you come to my car because I don't want to uh, uh, scare your wife and children." Can you come to my car? I went with him to the car, and he said, "What are you doing?" <laughs> I saw my uh, ID. So I said, "I'm charity worker," and this is my ID. I said, "Okay, what?" you want to, to do in so and so time in the in the bank i said i have a donation coins i want to put in the account so i they didn't take it of me he said okay that's enough and then he let, released me so <coughs> once again i'll say it. my teacher is dr honey so our teacher for charity work is Dr. Hani. He sacrificed, his family sacrificed more than us. Even when he used to come uh, in a holiday or school holiday, he used to bring his Hassan and his sister to uh, today and he help us to work. But still Hassan and his sister fight. And every, <laughs> every time, every time, one somebody, someone of them come in, uh, come be lying. Ah, I remember once he came, sit in the office, and sent me an azhar to dis distribute leaflet uh, uh, door, door to door to in the uh, most of his area. And that day, that day was very cold and snowing. <laughs> Me and Hazar was shaking and distributed <laughs> little from door to door. So uh, I request everyone of you to forgive me if anything I done anything to him. So I uh, please forgive me, and uh, that's what I have to say. And, uh, <laughs> Lift up. Yes. The other way. <laughs> other way. <laughs> honor, honor. I forgot to mention the name of Ayub family. One of the people who built Islamic leadership. <laughs> and the Ata Fizikibun family, Sister Rahana as well. His father. Thank you. The closing is for you. Jazakallah Khairan. Uh, Brother Ismail, you are close? No, 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 please. So, I know that, you know, we don't want to leave like this, but we continue, inshallah, for hours and days. But Jazakallah Khairan for everybody coming in. Remember Brother Jabbar, and you are in our du'as. Remember us, inshallah, and the family. And we'll stay in touch, inshallah. Jazakallah Khairan, all the brothers and sisters joining online, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. There will be a prayer to be led by our brother Abu Jabbar and after that lunch and the sweets will be shared.